Uh oh, guess what day it is? What is up, everybody? This is Talking Whatever Wednesday. I'm your host, alias Chuck Finley. And before we get started, I want to drop the pluggables. Follow the show on Twitter at TWWPod1. Join us on Facebook at Facebook.com slash Talking Whatever Wednesday. And whatever platform you're listening to this, give us give it five stars. And if you have any comments or suggestions, Email me at TalkingWhateverWednesday at gmail.com. Now, on to the episode. Let's talk about Ron DeFeo Jr., convicted murderer. <clears throat> Some of this is going to sound familiar, but let's give it a shot anyway. So, Ronald Joseph DeFeo Jr. was tried and convicted for the 1974 killings of his father, mother, two brothers, and two sisters in the village of Amityville on the south shore of Long Island, New York. Wow. Um, let's see, around 6.30 p.m., November 13th, 74, the then 23-year-old DeFeo entered Henry's Bar in Amityville and declared, You gotta help me! I think my mom and dad are having a shot! Feo and a small group of people went to 112 Oten Avenue, located near the bar, and found that DeFeo's parents were dead inside. One of the group, DeFeo's friend, Joe Yeswit, made an emergency call to Suffolk County Police Department, who searched the house and found that six members of the family were dead in their beds. The victims were Ron's parents, Ron DeFeo Sr., and Louise DeFeo, his four siblings, Don, Allison, Mark, and Don Matthew. All the victims have been shot with 35 caliber lever action Marlin 336C rifle around 3 o'clock in the morning of that day. The DeFeo parents had been shot twice, while the children had all been killed with single shots. Physical evidence suggested that Louis DeFeo and her daughter Allison, sorry, Louise DeFeo and her daughter Allison were both awake at the time of their deaths. According to police, the victims were all thing, <laughs> the victims were all laying face down in bed. The family had occupied 112 Ocean Avenue since buying it in 1965. The victims were later buried nearby in uh, St. Charles Cemetery in Farmingdale. Now, DeFeo Jr. was known as Butch. He was the oldest of the family and is, well, was a lone surviving member. And after the incident, he was taken to the local police station for his own protection after suggesting to police officers that the killings have been carried out by a mob hitman, Louis Fellini. Sure. DeFeo's trial began on October 14th, 1975. His defense lawyer, William Weber, mounted an affirmative defense of insanity, claiming DeFeo had killed his family in self-defense because he heard voices plotting against him. The insanity plea was su supported by the psychiatrist for the defense, Daniel Schwartz. The psychiatrist for the prosecution, Dr. Harold Zolan, mentioned that although DeFeo was a user of heroin and LSD, yet he had antisocial personality disorder and was aware of his actions at the time of the crime. So, one psychiatrist tries to get him off on insanity, the other one's like, no, 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 you're good. Uh, the trial's judge, Tom Stark declared that DeFeo's crimes were the most heinous murders committed in Suffolk County since its founding. On November 21st, 75, DeFeo was found guilty on six counts of second-degree murder. On, de on December 4th of the same year, Judge Stark sentenced DeFeo to six sentences of 25 years to life. Uh, DeFeo was held at the Sullivan, Cor Sullivan Correctional Facility 
in the town of Fallsburg, New York, and until his death, all his requests to the parole board and appeals had been denied. Now here's where it starts to get interesting. Um, all six of the victims were found face down in their beds with no sign of struggle. The investigating, indeed, <laughs> the investigation concluded that the rifle had not been fitted with a sound depressor and found no evidence of sedatives having been administered. Basically, uh, no sound suppressor, uh, no sound suppressing device, no silencer, and he didn't give them any sleeping pills or anything like that. Okay. Um, Feo claimed during his interrogation that he had drugged the family, so that's not true. Uh, the autopsy report indicated otherwise for the doctor. Quote, we did extensive toxicology, not only on the blood and urine, but on all of the organs that we removed, and it turned up zero that there wasn't anything in their body, Dr. Edelman explained. So, there it is. He said he drugged the family, and after tests, no, not at all. Then there's this. Neighbors did not report hearing any gunshots being fired, and those that were awake at the time of the murder simply heard the family's sheepdog, Shaggy, barking. Nobody heard any shots. What the hell's going on here? Uh, the Bayo had a volatile relationship with his father, but the motive for the killings remains really unclear. He asked police what he had to do in order to collect on his father's life insurance, which prompted Rasa Houston to suggest a trial that the, his motive was to collect on the life insurance policies of his parents. So that was possible. Uh, after his conviction, he gave several varying accounts of how the killings were carried out. In a 1986 interview for Newsday, DeFeo claimed his sister Don killed her father, and then their distraught mother killed all the siblings, apparently with a 38 caliber Smith & Wesson, before he killed his mother. He stated that he took the blame because he was afraid to say anything negative about his mother to her father. But about his mother to her father, Michael Brigant Sr., and his father's uncle, out of fear that they would kill him. Right. Get this. His father's uncle was Peter DeFeo, a capo or captain in the Genovese crime family. Okay? So, there's that. I mean, how many stories is this guy going to tell? Uh, but wait, no, no, wait, there's more. Uh, he also asserted that he was married at the time to a woman named Geraldine Gates, with whom he was living in New Jersey and that his mother phoned to ask him to return to Amityville to break up a fight between Don and their father. So, Junior drives to Amityville with Geraldine's brother, Richard Raimondo, um, who was with him at the time of the murders and could verify his story completely. In 1990, DeFeo filed a 440 motion, a proceeding to have his conviction vacated. In support of this motion, uh, DeFeo asserted that Don and an unknown assailant who fled the house before he could get a good look at him. Convenient. Killed their parents and Don killed their siblings. Nice. Uh, he said the only person he killed was Don, and that was by accident as they struggled over the rifle. And again, he asserted that his uh, brother-in-law was with him at the time of the murders. And later on, Raimondo was sub submitted an affidavit to the court, and it was asserted he could not be located to testify in person. So they can't find Raimondo to testify. Great. Uh, evidence was submitted to the court by the Suffolk County District Attorney's Office, suggesting that Raimondo did not exist, and that Geraldine Gates was living in upstate New York, married to someone else at the time of the murders. Uh, Geraldine did not testify at the hearing because the authorities had already confronted her about the false claim. And in 1992, secured a statement under oath where she admitted Raimondo was fictitious, that she did not actually marry DeFeo until 1989 in anticipation of the 440 motion. Uh, Judge Stark denied the motion, writing, I find the testimony of the, of the defendant overall to be false and fabricated. His testimony that during the fall of 1974 he was married and living with his wife and child at Long Branch, New Jersey is incredible and not worthy of belief. He produced no corroborating evidence in this regard. Another reason for my disbelief of, def of defendant's testimony is demonstrated by consideration of several portions of the trial testimony. He signed a lengthy written statement describing in detail his activities. In the statement, he said they lived with his family at 112 Ocean Avenue in Amityville and that he worked for his father. 
Daddy usually went to and from work with his father. That he was ill and stayed home from work on November 2nd, 1974. That he was on probation for having stolen an outboard engine and had an appointment to see his probation officer in Amityville on that very afternoon. Ben's girlfriend, Wendy Weiss, Mindy, sorry, Mindy Weiss, testified that she began dating the defendant in June 1974 and was with him frequently that summer and fall. End quote. Mark further declared, Defendant's testimony that he did not shoot and kill the members of his family is likewise incredible and not worthy of belief. So the judge wasn't buying any of this shit. On November 30th, 2000, DeFeo met Rick Asuna, the author of the Night of the, the author of the Night of, sorry, author of the Night the DeFeos Died, published in 2002. According to Asuna, they spoke for about six hours. However, in a letter to the radio show host Lou Gentile, DeFeo denied giving Rick Asuna information that he could use in his book, claiming that he immediately left the interview and did not speak to Asuna about anything substantive. 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 But according to Asuna, DeFeo claimed they had been DeFeo claimed that he committed the murders with his sister Don and two friends, Augie, Augie DeGenero and Bobby Kelsky. Quote, out of desperation, end quote, his parents applied to kill him. Allegedly, DeCleo claimed that after a furious row with his father, he and his sister planned to kill their parents, and that Don murdered the children in order to eliminate them as witnesses. He said that he was enraged on discovering his sister's actions, not his sister's actions, knocked her unconscious onto her bed and shot her in the head. Police found traces of burned gunpowder on Don's nightgown, which DeFeo Bayo proponents allege proves he discharged, she discharged the firearm. However, at trial, the ballistics expert, Alfred Della Pena, by that unburned gunpowder is discharged through the muzzle of a weapon, indicating that she was in proximity to the muzzle of the weapon when it was discharged and that she had not fired the weapon. Re reiterated this in the A&E -N -E Amityville documentary that has extensively discussed in Will Savvy's book, Mentally Ill in Amityville. Sounds familiar? Uh, Saviv had an expert evaluate Delapena's assessment, and the expert confirmed that he was correct. However, the, or moreover, the medical examiner found nothing to indicate that Don had been in a struggle. The bullet wound was, only, was the only fresh mark on her body. Uh, Joe Nickel notes that given the frequency with which DeFeo had changed his story over the years, any claims from him regarding the events that took place on the night of the murders should be approached with caution. I mean, that just means. Uh, most of the claims made in Rick Asuna's book are sourced to DeFeo's ex-wife, Geraldine Gates. While in the, in the 1986 interview with Newsweek, sorry, Newsday, she asserted that she married DeFeo in 1974. But soon as both she alleges they married in 1970. Their 1993 divorce case states they met in 1985, married in 1989, and divorced in 1993. Fantastic. Uh, Rick Asuna's book was adapted into a docudrama titled Shattered Hopes, The True Story of the Amityville Murders. Uh, the film was released on December 16, 2011, written, directed, and produced by Ryan Kassenbach, and featured narration by veteran actor Ed Asner. It examines all aspects of the Amityville case with strong focus on the DeFeo family and the events surrounding their murders. Now, uh, Ron DeFeo Jr. died at the age of 69 on March 12, 2021 at the Albany Medical Center, and his official cause of death was not released to the public. Of course. Now, if this sounds familiar to you, that's pop culture. Jay Anson's book, The Amityville Horror, was published in 1977. Uh, it's based on a 28-day period during December 75 and January 76, when George and Kathy Lutz and their three children became the first family to live at 112 Ocean Avenue since the murders. And the Lutz family left the house claiming they had been terrorized by paranormal ph phenomena while living there. And we all know this to be the Amityville Horror. Uh, 
first film adaptation, was the highest grossing independent film of all time and held that record until 1990. Followed by It was followed by several sequels, some of them not so good. Don't worry about it. But the 1982 film Amityville 2, The Possession, is based on the book Murder on the book Murder in Amityville by parapsychologist Hans Holzer. It is set at 112 Ocean Avenue, featuring the fictional Montelli family, who are said to be based on the DeFeo family. Uh, The story introduces speculative and controversial themes, including a a relationship between Sonny Montelli and his teenage sister, based loosely on a rumor of a relationship between DeFeo and his sister Dawn. Yikes. Uh, the film versions of the murders contain several inac- inaccuracies, which I'm sure they do. Uh, the 2005 remake of the Animal Horror contains the fictional character child, Jody DeFeo. Uh, the claim that DeFeo was influenced to commit the murder by spirits from a Lenape. I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing that incorrectly. Burial ground on the side of 112 Ocean Avenue has been rejected by local historians and Native American leaders who argue there is insufficient evidence to support that the claim to support the claim that the burial ground ever existed. So that's Ron DeFeo Jr.'s story in a nutshell. He kills his mom, dad, all of his siblings, makes wild accusations differing stories about what happened leading to what we know as the Amityville Horror and all the movies that came after that including The Conjuring Um, in any case that's Ron DeFeo Jr. Uh, he's a piece of shit Um, if you want to email with any uh, questions or comments um, that's talking whatever Wednesday at gmail.com. Thanks a lot for listening. It's my first time recording in a long time, as you can probably tell. Um, 